Barnabas Collins is a vampire who had been locked in a coffin for the last 200 years by a witch. He wakes up in 1972 to discover his descendants in ruin and the witch now ruling over the town. Can he battle dark magic in the 20th century to restore his family's honor? And maybe find love in an unlikely place? Let's find out! Welcome to Movie Recall! In today's video, we'll be going through the 2012 movie, Dark Shadows. It's time to recall! Let's get started! Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead! The movie starts and we see Barnabas narrating his family's background. When he was 10 years old, Barnabas' family traveled to the New World and brought England's industry to the wilderness of Maine. There, his father set up his empire of a fishing business which grew incredibly successful. The fishing town was named Collinsport and the family built a grand manor for themselves called Collinwood. Barnabas grows up into a charming young aristocrat and has an affair with Angelique, a servant he knew since he was a child. But Angelique wants more than an affair. She wants Barnabas to love her and profess his love for her. Barnabas very politely tells her that he can't lie. To get back at him, Angelique, who turns out to be a witch, curses his parents to die an unnatural death. Barnabas says in voiceover that he was convinced this death was murder and became obsessed with the dark arts. Meanwhile, he fell in love with a pretty young woman called Josette. This of course angers the scorned Angelique and she curses Josette to walk over to Widow's Hill and throw herself over the edge. Barnabas is distraught over Josette's death and jumps after her, but Angelique interferes, transforming him into a vampire so that he is forced to suffer eternally. After that, she reveals his monstrous nature to the people of Collinsport, who gather a mob and overpower him. He is chained and locked up in a coffin to be buried. Overlooking all this is Angelique, who looks quite satisfied with Barnabas's fate. Fast forward to 200 years later and it is now 1972. We meet a young woman on a train. She is traveling to Collinsport to apply for an ad for a governess. She is practicing for her interview and says that her name is Maggie before hesitating. She notices a skiing poster nearby and takes inspiration from it to call herself Victoria Winters. We see her being a little nervous around two policemen when she gets off the train. She hitches a ride with a couple of hippies who ask her what brings her to Maine all the way from New York and she answers, a friend. This is also a good time to mention for those with poor attention that the girl looks very much like Barnabas' dead lover. As Victoria walks up to Collinwood, we notice that the once great manor now looks very run down and poorly kept. Inside, she is welcomed by one of the two servants of the house. She is fascinated by the huge manor and its antique beauty. She notices a portrait of Barnabas and asks about it. They are then joined by the matriarch of the family, Elizabeth. Elizabeth puts her through a short interview and tells her about the house and its seven members. The family consists of Elizabeth, her daughter Carolyn, her brother Roger, and his son David, Dr. Hoffman, and the two servants. David is the eight-year-old child that Victoria has been hired for. Victoria asks about David's mother, who Elizabeth explains drowned at sea when David was five and he has been mentally distraught ever since. She hired Dr. Hoffman to work with him three years ago, but it hasn't helped as the child continues to think that he can talk to his dead mother. Later on during dinner, we're introduced to Carolyn, Elizabeth's teenage daughter, along with Roger and Dr. Hoffman. David turns up dressed as a ghost in order to scare Victoria before Elizabeth calls him out for it. Victoria, however, is nice to David and tells him she believes in ghosts too. Later that night, as Victoria unpacks, she notices David under a sheet again, but as she comes close, she realizes that it is not David. When she removes the sheet, it is the ghost of Josette. She tells Victoria he is coming before jumping off the chandelier. That night, a group of construction workers come across a chained coffin and decide to make the genius decision of opening it. Barnabas is released and kills every man present, drinking their blood. As he comes to his senses, he is unsettled by the changed world around him, but manages to make his way over to Collinwood. There, he comes across Willie and interrogates him. He manages to find out that 200 years have passed and four members of the Collin family survived. He then compels Willie to be his servant and take him to see Elizabeth. As they enter the manor, Barnabas runs into Carolyn and David. David notices that Barnabas looks exactly like the man in the portrait. As Barnabas continues to be weird around the children, Elizabeth arrives and they go to talk in the drawing room. He tells her who he is and to prove his claim, he says he knows every nook and cranny of this house. His first attempt to impress her doesn't go very well as it turns out she uses the secret room for her crocheting projects, but with his second attempt, he reveals a secret passageway that leads to a room full of family treasures. Barnabas says that he wants to become part of the family and that no family member will come to any harm from him. 
In fact, he wants to help restore the family to their prior glory. Elizabeth, despite still clutching a letter opener as a weapon, agrees, but says that this all must remain a secret between them. At breakfast, Barnabas meets the rest of the family, who are weirded out by his strange behavior. When Victoria walks in, Barnabas is surprised to see her, mistaking her to be Josette. He charmingly greets her and then tells Elizabeth to prepare the horses in order for him to go to the factories. We then finally meet Angelique, who now goes by Angie and is driving through town with blonde hair and in a red car. She is the owner of Angel Bay Seafood, the company which has led the Collins family business to ruins. Upon finding out about the attack in the forest, Angie realizes that Barnabas has escaped and goes to meet him. Barnabas is naturally angry at her and threatens to have her staked for being a witch. But she laughs, saying that no one will believe that now, especially when she has gained such an impeccable reputation in the town. When he tries to lash out at her, she manages to wound him with sunlight. Later on, Barnabas tells Elizabeth everything about Angelique and their history together, and he is very sad about having to bear the burden. But Elizabeth encourages him not to back down and keep on fighting because that is what he is good at. We then see that the house is undergoing renovations as Barnabas utilizes the family treasures to revive the house and the family business. This enrages Angelique, who watches from across the piers at the new and shining Collins Cannery Co. Barnabas also manages to compel fishing boats who work for Angel Bay to instead work for the Collins Cannery. One night, Julia, who is a psychiatrist, manages to hypnotize Barnabas and gets to know about him being a vampire. She rushes to confront Elizabeth about it, who tells her that she needs to keep this secret and encourages her to be fascinated by the vampire and study him. Julia then starts to experiment on him by taking his blood in hopes of turning him human again. Although it does seem apparent that Julia could possibly have another motive and that there is more to her than just being a drunk. We also see Barnabas asking Carolyn for advice on courting Victoria, and later, he and Victoria take a short stroll where they get to know each other better. Meanwhile, Angelique is getting worried about the Collins family business taking off and asks to have a meeting set up with Barnabas. During their meeting, she tells Barnabas to sell the company to her, to which he vehemently refuses. Angelique says that she is willing to let go of the past if he gets together with her because she hasn't stopped loving him. She is able to seduce him and they make love together. Barnabas regrets this and tells her that they cannot be together because he does not love her. She tells him that if he can't be hers, she will destroy him, but he leaves, wanting nothing to do with her. We then shift to Victoria, who is having a nightmare about her childhood. She dreams about when she was a child she saw a ghost, which was too strange for her parents to bear, and they sent her away to an asylum. She wakes up unsettled and sees the ghost again. The woman leads her to the chandelier in the foyer, asking for help before falling to the ground. She is mimicking her suicide, but Victoria doesn't know what the woman's ghost wants. Meanwhile, Barnabas has come up with the idea to host a party to establish the Colin family's status. They throw a very lavish party, inviting the entire town, and to Carolyn's delight, Alice Cooper performs. During the party, Barnabas comes across David who is standing guard for his father. Inside, Roger is with a woman and stealing wallets and such from the guests' coats. He also tells the woman that he doesn't know who the child outside is. Barnabas witnesses all of this from the window. Later, he sees Victoria standing on a balcony and joins her. She tells him about her past, how she had been able to see ghosts as a child and her parents had locked her away. She suffered through years of ill treatment before finally being able to escape and finding the ad about the governess. She says that she feels like she can tell Barnabas anything because it seems like she has known him forever, and that she has always felt something pulling her towards Collinsport all her life. The two of them share a kiss, not knowing that Angelique had joined the party and watches them. She turns around, driven mad with jealousy as her skin cracks. Barnabas rushes to see Julia, but finds her transferring his blood into her own self. He discovers that she had not been helping him become a human again, but using his blood to turn herself into a vampire instead. She begs him not to kill her, but he attacks and drains all blood from her body. Then, with the help of Willie, he takes her body and drops her into the ocean. In the next scene, we see Roger trying to find the secret passageway that leads to the family fortune. Barnabas finds him out and holds him up by the throat. He tells him that he has a choice. He can live here and be an exemplary father to David, or he can leave and live somewhere else. Roger chooses to move away, leaving a crying David behind. As David watches his father drive away, he runs inside, knocking into a ladder on which Willie is cleaning the mirror ball. The ball is about to fall on the kid when Barnabas rushes with inhuman speed and saves his life. 
Everybody is freaked out by him, especially Victoria, who runs away when he approaches her. Barnabas goes to see Angelique and demands that she remove his curse. She offers him a glass of blood and says that she knows about Julia Hoffman. She makes him one final offer, that he join her as a business partner and lover and she will let everyone he loves live. Otherwise, she will lock him away again. Barnabas tells her that she can kiss his posterior and walks away, but Angelique is one step ahead of him. With her magic, she ties him up and locks him into a coffin. She takes the coffin to the Colin family crypt and leaves him there. As Barnabas tries to give himself a pep talk, David comes to rescue him. Barnabas is extremely happy to see David and asks him how he knew where he was. David replies that his mother told him. David also tells him that the cannery caught fire. They make it back to Collinwood just as a mob arrives, led by Angelique. Barnabas offers to give himself up in place of his family, then attacks Angelique and cracks her skin. This exposes her as a witch to the townspeople. The Collins then make a combined assault on the witch, who starts attacking them. Willie tries to stop her with an axe, Elizabeth with a shotgun, and Carolyn is revealed to be a werewolf. Angelique admits to having had Carolyn bit by a werewolf in her crib and also having drowned David's mother because she was bored that there weren't enough misery in the family. She is able to injure them all and makes the house's wooden carvings come to life and attack them as well. She tries to kill David who is protected by an attack by his ghostly mother. Mortally wounded, Angelique tears out her heart and offers it to Barnabas, saying she really did love him. Barnabas then searches for Victoria and David hears from his mother that she's heading for Widow's Hill. Barnabas rushes off and manages to stop her, but learns she is planning to jump off the cliff of her own accord. She wants Barnabas to turn her into a vampire as well so that they can live together. When he refuses, she jumps. Barnabas saves her by biting her mid-fall and turning her into a vampire. This has the effect of combining Josette's soul with Victoria, who wakes up as a vampire and is now taken over by Josette. Barnabas ends the film with another voiceover narration that despite Victoria being dead, Josette is now alive in Victoria's body and they lived happily ever after in the dark shadows and his curse of eternal suffering and guilt of being immortal has come to an end. In the final shot, at the bottom of the ocean, the body of the newborn vampire Dr. Hoffman opens her eyes. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.